Hey everyone, this is Liz Brassoff from Thrust Flight. I'm one of the chief flight instructors here and I'm also a first officer at a regional airline. Today we're gonna to talk about the top five mistakes you're making on your pilot resume and how to avoid them. The first one I wanna talk about is aviation experience. So I have a lot of resumes that I've vetted as I'm hiring flight instructors, and I know it's happening in the airline training as well and recruiting there, is not including the right type of aviation experience. So this could mean you forget to put the aircraft types that you're familiar with, that you've flown and have experience in on your resume, or maybe you only put total hours, you don't put any of the other applicable categories, like maybe total instrument time or total instruction given or total pilot and command time or cross country time, just depending on the type of position you're applying for, they wanna see your relevant time and putting no time would not be the move. You are applying for flying positions. They wanna know how many hours you have. That's part of your application here. The next one is only including your piloting experience or your aviation experience on your resume. They wanna know more about you as an individual. I'm hiring an employee. I need to know what type of person they are, what kind of employee they're gonna be, and that's more than just how many hours they've flown or what airplanes they have time in. I need to know about your volunteer experience or if you have recent work history that's not aviation related, it's fine to include that. We wanna get a more complete picture of you as an individual before extending a position. So you wanna make sure you include aviation experience and that that's not the only thing you've put on your resume. You wanna have a good mixture there. The second top mistake I see on pilot resumes is the formatting. I've been sent all different types of formatting and file types for resumes. What you wanna do is make sure yours is saved as a PDF before submitting it and that the spacing and the text is all in a professional standard formatting. You don't wanna send this person a Word document that they could type and edit on or that when they open it because they don't have the same compatible software, it changes the space facing and now it looks like you don't know how to put paragraphs in a document. So sending a PDF helps avoid all of that and helps your employer know that you've got some attention to detail and that you know how to format and present yourself in a resume. Number three, is you need to have a professional email. We've gotten a lot of entertainment out of the email addresses that applicants put on their resumes. Flying eagle number one at gmail.com or some other nickname maybe you had in high school. Having too casual of an email address just really makes your application feel more informal and it doesn't help you stand apart from the other applicants. We wanna to put together a professional representation of yourself that shows you have attention to detail and having a professional email address Address is gonna really top that off. Number four is typos. I have had people who've worked at Chit-fil-A and all sorts of other hilarious errors from typos in their own resume. It doesn't encourage me as a hiring manager to choose you out of a stack of applicants if you can't correct the typos or errors in your own resume. No matter what job you're applying for, pilot or something else, we wanna make sure that we're hiring people who care about what they're doing, who can show some attention to detail and are professional, right? Having errors in literally the spelling of the words in your own resume that's about you doesn't help me know that you have any of those skills. It doesn't help me know you're detail-oriented, doesn't help me know you're professional, or that you're gonna be the right candidate for this position. So have somebody else take a look at it before you do your final submission. Make sure you've really gone through it to check for typos because the programs you use, the software you write in, isn't always going to catch it. Sometimes it's an actual word you've spelled correctly, it's just the wrong word for the context you're using it in. So you need to have a human editor look at this as well. All right, number five, you need to keep it to one page. One of the top errors I see on pilot resumes are multiple pages of resume submitted in their application. We just wanna cut it down to one page. That's the professional standard in the United States and there's nothing that you can't fit on one page that needs to be included, I promise. Anything else could be shared in the actual interview with the company that you're applying to. And you have to remember as a pilot, you're always gonna be submitting more than just a resume. You have a logbook, proof of the time and experience and credentials you have. So it doesn't all need to be stated on your resume. If you're pressed for time, there's other things you can do like take out the objective statement, limit your work history to only going back 10 years, or there's other things you can do to help fit it onto one page, but that's the rule. Don't make the mistake of making it more than one page. 
All right, I hope that helps you prepare your pilot resume a little better for the next position you apply to. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.